Magnus. You wouldn't believe it if you haven't seen it yourself, but he actually has a tooth in the middle of his head. Mom always told everyone that he was created by her illness. Mom had something called schizophrenia, Grandma said, and everything in Mom's world looked like a Picasso painting. The day he was born was the first time in several years Magnus's mother, Mary Ann, escaped being a prisoner in her own illness. He was the most beautiful thing she had ever seen, and as long as Magnus was by her side, everything was normal. Quite normal anyway, for the staff in the maternity ward shuddered when they saw Magnus. Mary Ann told everyone that they just didn't see his beauty because their hearts were blind, and because Mr. Hatman had told Mary Ann that they were bewitched. She said, if you could really see my child, you would see he's a beautiful little baby. Mary Ann didn't care at all about what the staff said. She knew from sheer experience that things are not always as they seem. Mary Ann's world. In the normal world, everything is quite calm, and the colors go from gray to rainbow happy. In Mary Ann's world, all is more like an explosion of colors. Just as if the rainbow had gone crazy and literally sneezed out all colors, gray and calm do not exist. It's the hysterical chaos Mary Ann really couldn't tolerate, or those annoying little creatures Mr. Hatman called jackass berries or jackalberries for real. The jackalberries was talking nonstop to Mary Ann about things that were completely stupid and irritating. Sometimes they came to her in the morning and sometimes in the middle of the night. When they came and Mr. Hatman was nearby, he would paint them over. Mr. Hatman is a very small magician that with the help of his brushes can transform anything into anything. He says it is not a disease Mary Ann suffers, but that she, against her will, was embroiled by the witch scream into the magical kingdom of tree. When she saw Mary Ann's beauty for the very first time, she became so furious that she tore a hole in the veil between the two worlds. Mary Ann didn't, to be honest, really believe everything she experienced, and the diagnosis was much easier for her to handle than a world full of magic. She often thinks, this is my illness, and I'll make my deranged reality be anything I want. Mary Ann can sit on her bed sometimes, in the nursing home Misty Lantern and solve crossword puzzles or talk to Grandma on phone, when suddenly the corners of the room get sucked into the middle while slowly making a loop around her. When this happens, she feels sick and hangs up, for all of a sudden, she is leaving reality. If she is lucky, Mr. Hatman waits for her when she enters the Dungeons of Tree. You're not even allowed into the Land of Tree, Mr. Hatman said, and bowed deeply with his hat in his hand. Welcome back, beautiful lady. Then he gesticulates with the hat toward the awful cages in deranged shapes and colors. I don't want to be here, Marianne complained. Mr. Hatman gave her a sad smile back and went whistling before her into all craziness, and with his back against her, he hollered, I know! And from nowhere, he took his brushes in both hands and just painted away most of Mary Ann's pain so that everything looked more or less normal. One day, Mr. Hatman said, I think I know how you will get out of here for good. Sometimes Mary Ann suspected that Mr. Hatman was in the real world too, but she was afraid of that thought. It made her feel more sick. In the deranged dungeons, everything became a mirror of reality thanks to Mr. Hatman. He made Mary Ann feel like home, even though she wasn't. The comfort in all the crazy was that she knew she was sick. When the jackalberries came, they had hundreds of questions. Why doesn't it rain on the moon? Can you drink water without urinating? If a train is going 300 kilometers per hour, how is it possible to walk in the opposite direction? Mary Ann hated when they came. They were extremely unpleasant and similar in behavior to mosquitoes, which drove her mad. The worst was when they came and she was visited by her doctor or a friend. They could sit on her shoulder and whisper all the questions or jump around on the bed, up and down, babbling. She couldn't make them go away, and she was the only one who saw them. Then it was Karen, the snake dragon made of stars and the dangerous forest. Magnus goes to live with grandmother. For a few years, Mom and Magnus lived together in a nice little apartment in the middle of town. But when Magnus were to start school, he moved home to grandma. Marianne knew that she would become sick the same day he started school, and she would become too ill to be able to take care of him. 
Fortunately, the love was strong in the Colin family, so moving home to Grandma wasn't bad at all. Not even something weird worth considering, Magnus thought. Grandma Fanny also said the first time she saw Magnus that he was the ugliest child she had ever seen. Thing is, that's not nice to say to anyone or about someone, but it was part of the spell, and the impulse couldn't be controlled. After a few hours with the child in her arms, he became the most beautiful baby, to Grandma too. It was the grandmother who told the tale of how he was born. Before Mary Ann became ill, she was like any other young woman at all. She was working at the convenience store outside the town. Every morning she took the bus to work, and in the evening she went home again. Mary Ann was very beautiful, and it didn't take long before a young man called Tommy fell head over heels in love with her. She also fell in love, really much in love, very deeply so. However, sometimes she thought that it was something strange about Tommy and how they met. For some reason, she could never remember their first meeting. She told Grandma she asked Tommy and he answered, but a few minutes later, she forgot it again. Mary Ann's doctor explained that memory loss could be a part of the diagnosis. A few weeks after Mary Ann met Tommy, she began to hear voices. Finally, it got so bad that she couldn't distinguish between what was happening in her head and reality. Mary Ann's doctor was a good old man, and he had a fascination with schizophrenia. He told Mary Ann that he would never give up trying to help her, and he didn't. As a good psychiatrist, he prescribed various medications to her all the time, in the hope that one of the cures would help. But they didn't. The drugs made Mary Ann's illness worse, and when she became too sick, she thought that everything around her melted and became distorted. She became depressed and tried to tap away the delusions, but eventually she gave up and enrolled herself to the Misty Lantern, home for the mentally ill. Be that as it may seem, Mary Ann felt much safer at Misty than at home, and that's when Tommy just mysteriously disappeared. The neighbors said he left the city with a broken heart. When Mary Ann turned 30 years old, she told me, Grandma said, that a strange small man had appeared in her distorted world. Mary Ann had also begun painting at Misty's and painted everything she saw when reality disappeared. It ended up in hundreds of drawings taped on the walls. I thought, Grandma said, it looked like a story from a fairy tale gone a little bit weird. Then you see Magnus, the odd little man popping up. He is no bigger than a plum, Mary Ann told us, and he had an unacceptably large hat. In his hand, he always had at least one paintbrush, and he painted everywhere, but not on paper. Mary Ann told me one day that the little man had painted a beautiful child to her that would, when the time was right, bring Mary Ann back to us. From outside in to inside out, the hat man told Mary Ann. Mary Ann's doctor laughed when Grandma told him and chuckled, Great, when that day comes, I'll put a nice ribbon around all my psychology books and retire. It was, Grandmother said, a very exciting story. But lo and behold, after a few months, Mary Ann's stomach began to grow, and an ultrasound confirmed that a wriggling little baby was inside sucking his thumb. There was an outcry in the hospital. Everyone was worried and wondered who the father could be. It is, you see, Magnus, Grandma said. Not good if Mom had a relationship with someone she did not know about in the hospital, and that person would surely not be such a good person. But then, who made Mom pregnant? Magnus asked, who is my father? Well, Grandma said, this is a strange thing we still don't know. When you were born, blood samples were taken from you and everyone that worked in Misty Lantern and those who just willingly wanted to help your mother. Even the old Bert in the kitchen, who prepares all amazing dishes, had let the good doctor test him. Grandma laughed. It was pretty tense amongst everyone before the results came, but the results showed that no one was your dad, Grandma said. Mom told us, of course not, you silly people. This baby is created with the most beautiful colors in the world, and it was Mr. Hatman that painted him. Magnus liked the story very much. It made him feel special and magical. Before Magnus moved in with Grandma, his mom gave him a checkered small suitcase. It had a blue foundation and red and green lines over it in the fabric, creating small squares. 
Marianne told Magnus that inside the suitcase he will find pencils and crayons and brushes and paper and erasers and anything else he might need to become a great artist. Each time you feel lonely or someone calls you ugly, take some paper up and draw something beautiful. I learned that when you were born. Everything we create is beautiful, and when we really see the magic, life will change.